Hey guys, this is Justin back with an engineer's perspective and today I'm going to be doing a video on my favorite budget line of, of kitchen knives and I've mentioned them in a few videos and I have even a video of me sharpening this one here but I was just going to do a dedicated video on uh, my set. So this is just a knife roll that I actually bring with me when I'm going uh, to like the in-laws on a holiday and I know that I'm going to be helping with the cooking and the prep. So I'll bring this set so that I have sharp knives to use. Um, and then there's some that I keep in my own kitchen. Uh, so let's just kind of talk about what is, what do I got here? So the, these are the Victorinox Fibrox series. And uh, they are probably the best um, budget best value in kitchen knife that's out there. And the reason for that is they're at a pretty good price. So like the more expensive chef knives and things like that are like 45 to maybe $55. And uh, so that's where it tops out for the most part. And then uh, what you're getting for that price though is for one, very comfortable hard plastic handles that have this great grip that works even when it's like all greasy. And then you get nicely heat treated X50 uh, CRMOV15 steel at about 55, 56 Rockwell. So very soft, but it's very stainless. And the way they do it is it's very easy to deburr and sharpen. So that makes it very accessible to a lot of people. And then lastly, and my favorite part of them is that they all come with great cutting geometry. Every knife I've ever bought, with the, this being the only exception, and I think I've bought 12 of them now, comes with uh, behind the edge thickness of less than 10 thousandths at a 15 degree per side angle, which is great cutting geometry. It's real, for any knife, for a Japanese knife, that's good cutting geometry. Um, so I really, really enjoy that. And these things will just outcut so many things because they are just so thinly ground. They don't even need to be sharp to cut. Um, so that's really great. Uh, right off the bat, I need to say this, is that um, uh, there is a point when steel is so soft that it can't hold a very acute edge and from the factory, the 15 degrees per side is too acute for this steel. So I would recommend the first thing you do when you get these knives is bump that up to between, I'd say 18 and 20 degrees per side, just right off the bat. It's going to roll right away if you don't. So first thing you should do is do that. So with that out of the way, let's talk about what I, what I bring with me and just some things that I like and don't like I guess and more just like a show and tell but this is the 10 inch chef's knife I, I like tend to like bigger knives over smaller knives so if I had to have one chef's knife it'd be in the probably a 10 inch maybe a nine so that's this this is the only one that came with geometry over 10 thousandths it was like 11 or 12 thousandths behind the edge and uh, I did screw around with this one a little bit where I sharpened this side to, uh, I think it was 10 degrees. You almost can't even tell how wide that bevel is, but it's very wide. So I sharpened this side to 10. And then this side I, I went steeper at like 20. So it's much thinner. So it's kind of like an asymmetrical grind, kind of like that, like how some Japanese knives are. Just for giggles. I tried it out for a while. I don't really like it that much. So I haven't reground this side, but now I've just, I've got a 20 degree micro bevel, just that's symmetrical on it now. But tried that out, that was something. But I prefer the eight inch of this because the profile's a little bit different and the worst geometry. Um, but I like, I do just enjoy this big size. So it's whatever. Um, all of these have very blade heavy because the handles aren't super heavy. Um, and then uh, these guys, on a 10 inch, it's more of a, it encourages more rocking than the eight inch does, but I don't know if you can hear this. 
and it still comes down pretty hard on the heel. So you can get good, you know, chopping like that or rock chopping. So it's got a versatile profile for different users. And then the tip isn't too high up so that it's, for me, it's easy to get that tip down to the board like that. I find with some German style knives, like the, the Henkel Pros, the standard pro line is, uh, it has a very upturned tip and like some of the sabatiers and I'm like up here trying to use the tip. So I like the tip location. I like that it's got the harder heel and yeah, it's just a good knife. And then see how that's angled. So when you do your pinch grip, it actually is cushioning your finger. So I usually hold it somewhat like that. So it actually makes it for a pretty comfortable knife. So that's the 10 inch chef. Stick that right back in there. Next one we got is one of these. This, this is the only Victorinox classic. All the other ones are the Fibrox and I recommend you do the Fibrox. But this is one of their three and a quarter inch pairing knife. I like it. The blade has got a little bit of flex, but it's not crazy. I can just reach the tip with my finger. Honestly, I usually let this guy hang out because I like to be beyond the tip. But it's very light, very cheap. Each of these is like $5. Six thousandths behind the edge on all of them. So great little pairing knives. You know, if you wanted to, you could throw them away. I sharpen them. Um, so I like the pairing knives. I have, this is a knife that really surprised me at how much I like it. This, I don't even know what they call this. It's, I, what is it? They might call this their like six inch mini chef knife or maybe it's their six inch utility knife. But this is one of my, like overall, it's, my, it's probably my top 10 kitchen knives. And there's actually another one in here that makes it into that group. But is it small enough to do those utility uh, tasks? It's got a little bit of flex. It's very thin behind the edge like the rest, fairly thin spine. And you can kind of see how that handle angles up and away. So what that means is that even though it's a very small, compact blade, I can actually do board work with it. So I just hold it like that, and that gives me knuckle clearance. Yeah, so I really like this, because you can do in-hand things with it, fine tasks, board tasks. It's very thin and slicey, comfortable handle. Love this little guy. Best utility knife for the dollars. So next is the boning knife. I actually do not like this knife. Um, I was I did a little boning knife journey. So this was the first one I got. This is a six inch curved uh, semi-flex or semi-stiff. Is it semi-flex or semi-stiff? This is a semi-stiff, six inch, six inch semi-stiff boning knife. So it still came thin behind the edge, but the flex on this, is is too stiff for me i don't do like beef or deer or anything with this so i prefer a little bit more flex and um yeah and the way that they adjust the flex so this being the semi-stiff this being the super flex it might be a little tricky to see with through the camera you can see that definitely on the tip is through the spine thickness and uh, the spine thickness on this guy, especially because it's so short, compromises its cutting ability a notable amount. So I actually don't like the semi-stiff because it's too stiff and it doesn't cut that great, but it's in my travel kit because it's not the one that I like. Um, my favorite stiffness level is standard stiff, and I had a Mercer boning knife in that, but I gifted that to my brother-in-law. So now if I'm using a um, a Western boning knife, I use this one, which I'll talk about next. This is another one that I absolutely adore. And this is a six inch curved uh, uh, boning knife. It's a super flex. And uh, so it's very thin behind the edge, but because it's a super flex, it's thinner at the spine, especially out here, than a lot of knives are behind the edge. Like this thing is thinner than my Wustoff, um Icon, let's just measure this. This thing is thinner than my Wustoff Icon in like, at the spine. 
No, nah, not there. Not there. Okay, I guess maybe only at the tip. Uh, come on. There you go. There you go. Right, right about there. Okay. But like at the tip, the spine is thinner than my Wustoff icon is behind the edge. And I, it's just so slicey. And when you're, if you're using this in an up and down motion, that super flex doesn't bother, doesn't do anything. So there's the flex on it. And if you notice, Victorinox does a really good job on their boning knives, is like on a poorly done boning knife, the flex will start here and it'll be more or less like an even radius. But the Victorinox boning knives will be pretty stiff up front and then they'll do a break out here. And I like that because it's, it allows you to get into places better, in my opinion. So I, Victorinox does a really good job about that on their curved and on their straight boning knives. I prefer the curved boning knives, which is why I gave the Mercer away, because it was a straight. Because uh, on the straight boning knives, I feel like you, it's, you would just tend to do all of your work with about that much of your blade. Whereas on the curved, I feel like you can use more of it easier instead of just like constantly using your tip. And then also, I actually use this as a utility knife. I just took this out of my knife block. It got replaced by a bunka. But I used to use this because of that curve. I'd cut up oranges with this thing, apples, like just generic fruit, things like that. So I really like the, the curve. And this thing is just so slicey, so slicey. And uh, for actually breaking down chickens, I use a Hanasuki, but excuse me, but I really like this knife. And I've broken down a bunch of chickens with this. Okay. And lastly, or second to lastly, maybe even third or fourth, actually, sorry. Um, I do like my 10 inch, but sometimes there's a lot of small cutting boards that get used. So I do like to have one small option. And this is a really great knife. This is the Santoku, I think it's a seven inch. And it's quite stiff, but it's very thin still. I don't know, what's it at the, the spine here in millimeters? So at the base, so yeah, up here it's 1.7 millimeters. And I'm sure it's close here. And then out here it's 1.3. So very thin, but it's flat ground. The Grantons do help. That's just the little scallops here. The Grantons do help a little bit with stickage and gliding through food. Mostly the gliding through food, not as much on the stickage, but a little bit. But it's very thin at the spine, very thin at the edge, very straight profile. So it's, it's good for this kind of chopping and you can do some of that hard heel, plenty of knuckle clearance. But once it's just the theme of all these knives, just thin, it's thin here, it's thin here. Most of them aren't overly flexible, so you feel confident with them. Just good. <clears throat> so if, I, if I'm stuck in a tighter, tighter corners, then I like to have the smaller one. You know, so. And then what I didn't mention is this is a Zwilling made in Germany 8 inch? 10 inch, 10 inch steel. Um, it's pretty high quality. Bed Bath & Beyond was going out of business, so they had it for 25 bucks, but it's, I believe it's a regular cut. Um, it's a really nice steel, great steel. I have, I, the one I keep in the house is an F Dick Sapphire cut or a Dickeron one, so it's quite a bit nicer. And then what I left out is this Mercer, uh, bread knife and, uh, I, it's okay. I use it as like a meat slicer. So I've sliced hams and turkeys mostly with this and roasts a couple times. But I do want to note that they're, the way the handle's made and how you, there's the protruding edge there is you can actually use this on a board. So I've given this to people in a kitchen to like cut up a bunch of tomatoes, especially when if they're going to use it on like a glass cutting board. So this is great for like cutting up tomatoes and you can... You can like use this like a chef's knife. So I actually really like this Mercer. It's like $13. Mercer Millennia. Yeah, Mercer Millennia 10 inch. But 
That said, I do have the eight inch Victorinox um, bread knife and you can see how there is not the exposed metal down there at the bottom. So I'll just do this side by side. See that? See the difference in height there? So I don't like this one as much, but this one I keep in the kitchen drawer just to like slice a cake or, you know, pastries usually. Usually I just use regular knives for like a bagel or something, but uh, same comfortable handle. I'll give you the, the blade is a little bit flexy, but not too much. The Mercer is stiffer, which I like. Um, I like how the tip terminates in a, in a scallop and it's the pointy kind. I like pointy serrated knives, not the roundy ones. Um, but I like that because you can, it really helps you draw through the remainder of it. Whereas on the Mercer, it ends just like flat and I, I don't like that. Um, so yeah, that's, that's my setup. Normally if I'm, when I'm doing this, I prep with the 10 inch and, uh, I don't actually use the boning knife much when I'm traveling, but I prep with the 10 inch and the paring knife and, uh, Usually if those are dirty, then I'll go to this, this utility knife. And if I'm just, if I'm prepping, but like, they're like, oh, I hear I set it up for you. And it's this tiny little board, then I'll grab the um, Santoku there. And then, yep, serrated for slicing meats for the most part. And yeah, that's it. Use the steel, um, keep some going. You know, they can get really dull and the steel will bring them back. That's how they're designed with that soft steel in them, is they're designed to, you can bring them back pretty much from the abyss. So yeah, that was kind of a show and tell, I guess. Um, I'd, like I said, if you're going to check out some of these and you're not looking for like a chef's knife, I really recommend you check out the Super Flex. Oh, I'd, I'd hated, it was too flexible to bone with, but after I've, now that I've used it for a few months, I got really used to it. So you do adjust to the super flex. Um, and I really do recommend you check this knife out because you can use it on the cutting board. You can use it to bone. It can, it's a great utility knife if you're looking for a utility knife. But if you don't want something like this, this is a, also a great utility knife. It's thin also. It can be used to bone, to bone out stuff. 1.36 millimeters, so yeah, just thin. That's the moral of the story. Thin, 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 and awesome. So that's me doing my public service announcement of go buy Victorinox knives. Even if you've got a bunch of expensive ones like I do, I've got, you know, Miyabi and uh, Wustoff, Messermeister, um, what other expensive, Kikuichi. I'm just trying to think of the expensive names in there. Those are probably, for the most part, covers it. But yeah, my Takamura. We've got Kohetsu's, which aren't expensive. And other things, but yeah. So I recommend them. Try them out, especially if you're looking to get your first good kitchen knife. Either look at the Mercer Genesis or Renaissance or the, the Victorinox knives. So yeah, that's that's what I've got for you guys today. Thanks for watching. Bye.